All right. Give me those questions. Let's do those. Let's zip through these real quick, see if something fun comes up. Just hand them forward, hand them, if you've written them down. Anybody written a question down? Here's just a couple, just for fun, just for fun. <clears throat> Let's see, what do you think uh, contributes to the recent decline in the humanist atheist skeptic movement? Uh, and did you say searing meat does not seal in juices, really? <laughs> yes. Sealing meat does not sear in juices. Searing, searing meat helps with the Maillard reaction, which makes it taste, makes your tongue uh, more receptive to the flavors that are happening because you get this kind of grit that happens. But they've done tests where you take a piece of meat and you weigh how much it weighs and you cook it in an oven or you sear it and you weigh it and it's, the juices are the same. There is no difference in terms of the juice. However, it is recommended to sear because of the Maillard reaction, which uh, makes it all tasty, chewy, lovely. You get that kind of browning sugar thing, which is what you want, but it has nothing to do with the juices. Anyway, uh, why don't we think, I, I love the duality of this kind of a question, it's really good. <laughs> why are skeptics screwed and what about the juice thing? Um, <clears throat> I don't know, you know, I think the decline, oddly enough, I think the decline is to the fact that it got so large and so that it seems like a relative decline because I think it's like a relative thing of like 10 years ago, there was, you know, you couldn't picture um, books, you know, number one best-selling skeptic-based books or science-based books, and all of a sudden there was this huge influx, and I think things got very popular very quickly, and then things splintered very quickly, so I think there's a lot more smaller groups that are sort of involved, but the general, the general approach of everyone is still of critical thinking, even though each sort of subgroup has its own hang-ups, which are weird, but I try to focus on the stuff that we all agree on, about like, you know, two plus two equaling four, you know, general kind of things like that, so it's, it's a weird blessing and curse that we've gotten, we've gotten kind of large, but then it feels like it's, we've gotten smaller because each group feels like it's sort of a subset of a subset, which is true of any kind of movement. That's kind of usually the way it works. Um, any thoughts about karma? Ooh, that's a good one. I think karma is, is, it's not a cosmic real thing. I think it's a practical real thing. I think just in terms of when you are nice to people, the human response, the, 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 homo sapien response towards, towards kindness is usually more kindness, usually, in most people. So it's not, it's not some cosmic scoreboard just keeping track. But if you interact with more and more people in a positive way, first off, it makes yourself feel better. So like, who cares? You know what I mean? Honestly, like, it's like, it's almost worth it just for that. It's like, I was, remember I was, I was in line at Wegmans and, I, and the guy in front of me was short, like 30 cents or something. So I just plopped a dollar down. And he was so thankful. Oh, thanks. I'm thanks so much. Thanks. And I said, I just paid a dollar to feel great about myself the rest of the day. It's like, no <laughs> <the> problem. <laughs> so it's, totally worth it. it's totally worth the karmic approach. Be nice to people because it makes you feel, yourself feel good about it. So, yeah. Um, pulling out of Facebook quietly or noisily? <laughs> uh, yeah, as long as you don't finish on Facebook's face. I think that's all that matters. No, um, quite, yeah, that's terrible, terrible, terrible. Um, uh, pulling out of, yeah, because people tend to say, you know, it's that vague booking thing. They call it vague booking where you say like, oh, today. And you have to go, what happened? Are you okay? And it's like, yeah, let's make my friends ask me. And it's like, no, I'm fine. Vague booking is annoying. And yeah, it's a similar thing was sort of like, that's it, I'm done with Facebook. Why? What happened? Please tell us what's going on. Yeah, I, I, I like the quiet pull out. I kind of just like, okay, I'm going to go. And then if someone writes and says, hey, I haven't heard from you in a while, you can say, yeah, you know, I'm stuck under my refrigerator, so I can't. I can't. <laughs> or whatever, whatever the reason may be. <laughs> did you have to take religion classes at Moravian? If so, how did those teachings conflict conform to your personal beliefs? I did have to take religion classes at Moravian. I'm a Moravian graduate. Um, and what was fascinating to me when I was a freshman, we get to choose some somewhat chunks of your, of your curricula, curriculum. So uh, I saw amongst the religion classes was religions of China and Japan. I thought, perfect, I'll do that, that'll be cool. I'll do that, that'll count as my religion. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't count as a religion class. What? Yeah, exactly, yeah. So we had to take Jesus and the Gospels, which was, no, it was great. I mean, I'm glad I took it because it's, I tell you, some, Someone said the best, way to, the best way to create an atheist is have them read the Bible. You know what I mean? Like to actually read, have you ever actually read the thing? 
It's horrible. It's like so, like, read it cover to cover. Like, do it for yourself, especially the Old Testament. You just go, wait, what? Really? Because there's, there's lovely bits, and there's lovely, like, chunks. Like, like 6% is kind of cool. And the rest is all just, no, seriously, it's just, like, a lot of killing and a lot of just smiting and begatting. And it's awful. It's awful. And, and what, the best thing when you're debating someone, this happened to me once on the boardwalk in Atlantic City. A guy walked up to me and he said, you know what John 3.16 is? And I said, yeah, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And he's like, are you a Christian? I said, no, I'm an atheist. <laughs> <laughs> and I spent the rest of the day like <laughs> so, And it didn't even cost me a dollar, exactly. So you have, to know more, you have to know more about the topic that you're debating someone with than they do, even though it's their supposed expertise, because very often people, especially, unfortunately, not to their own, not to their fault necessarily, but just the way the system is built up. They're, you promote the cool stuff in the Bible and you skip, you know, Lot saying, rape my daughters instead of the angels. Please, rape my, take my daughters. Rape my daughters instead of the angels because the angels, are, they're much more attractive than my daughters. So rape my daughters, please. Because I'm going to have them after you have them, which is like literally in the story. Like, oh, it's awful. It's awful. Anyway, so they skip that part and they talk about, oh, like, yeah, you know, Jesus was okay, I guess. So, so the religion classes were great. The teacher, was she was wonderful, too. She was a wonderful teacher for that. We called it JC and the Boys. That was the name of that course. Jesus and the Gospels was called JC and the Boys. And that was where I learned that, you know, like the Gospels are, they're totally, fab, not just totally, I mean, we know they're fabricated, but they're completely fabricated. And that they're collections of other works that are put together. And, and like everyone knows this. No one debates this. No one except the most vehement denier of, of biblical history. You know, biblical scholars all agree, like, yeah, this stuff was just put together. It was just random stories kind of put. Luke, there was no Luke. It wasn't like this Luke, you know, the, the Luke, which was read to me all the time. I'm Ukrainian Catholic. They always read from Luke. And Luke is like the most fake out of the Gospels. You know, like Mark is the one that's apparently the most accurate in terms of its thing. Anyway, uh, one more. Uh, what album is Don't You Assume on? Oh, uh, that is unreleased. That is an unreleased song. So that might be on the next record. But there is a video on YouTube, the, the, uh, the uh, Misconception song. There's a, there's a video on YouTube that a, a lovely filmmaking student approached me and said, can I make a video for that song? So we did it in my apartment. And uh, check that out on YouTube. It's really, really fun. Excuse me. Um, the on iTunes. No, no, no. The, um, oh, that's what you meant. Sorry. Yeah, thank you. Misinformation. That's why she's misinformation. Don't you assume is, uh, yeah, that's called the assumption. I'm just confused. I was making the assumption that they meant the other thing, and I was totally wrong. So, yes, the assumption song is on the album in Terabang, which unfortunately is not available here. That one's sold out physically, but you can get it on iTunes. All right.